Thank you very much, Professor Ryan. And actually, this uh, event is a cooperation of few organizations, which I uh, want to mention because one of the things that you can see today is really the results of people working together, and that is, for, uh, um, that is the Institute of the History of the Polish Jewry and, and Israel-Poland Relations here in Tel Aviv University, as well as Stefan Roth Institute for the Study of Antisemitism and Racism in Tel Aviv University as well. But also, uh, organi organizing and sponsorship was done by the European Association of Poland Museum of the History of Polish Jews, and I would like to welcome uh, uh, Anna Zielinska from the Dr. Anna Zielinska from the University of Lorraine to say a few words. Thank you. Witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie. Hello everyone. Yes, when we started to think about organizing this conference, I was thinking that we were going to speak about history. And that that people that we wanted to invite from Poland were going to be respect, you know, respected scholars, um, the, the head of the Polish Museum, respected people from Poland. Yeah, now those people are in the way of becoming public enemies in Poland. So something changed and, I don't know, we will be able to speak about that uh, quite soon during the question session. So, indeed, I would like to say that this event would not be possible without the institutional support of the Institute for the History of Polish Jewry and Israel-Poland Relations from the Tel Aviv University, also the Stephen Roth Institute for the Study of Anti-Semitism and Racism, um, <laughs> my institution that is stated here, and, of course, this wonderful museum. This is our second collaboration. Thank you so much for, for your continuous support. Um, also, the uh, Daniel Abraham Center for International and Regional St Studies. Uh, we thank them so much for, for, for their help. ...in Tel Aviv and um, uh, the uh, Agudat Yedidot Israel Pauline uh, organization for the wonderful help. I have their beautiful uh, sign here. Thank you so much. So I would like to say a, a tiny story of two uh, Gomuka Aliot, right? Because th this, was, th this is a quite a paradoxical situation. I just spoke about that um, a few minutes before with one of, with one of you. Uh, apparently, People who came here with the first Gomulka um, Alia were quite happy, were not really disgusted with what go was going on in Poland. The second Gomulka uh, Alia is very different. The picture you see here is a picture from the exhibition at the Polin Museum. I really invite you very warmly to go to Polin right now, it's wonderful. By, by Tadeusz uh, Rakonwicki, and uh, the, the scene of the crazy dance that is featured in this movie is a scene that is taking place in an old synagogue, empty synagogue. The fact that this synagogue was empty, well, it's quite clear why it was empty at the early 70s, right? So Tadeusz Konwicki is one of the Polish artists. He was not a Jewish, he's from Vilnius. He was obsessed, sorry? Sorry. Uh, so Tadeusz Konwicki is one of the Polish artists I would like to talk to you about very quickly. He was obsessed with what happened to, to the Polish Jewry during the Second World War, but also during uh, the March 68. Um, a few words, if you don't mind, about this first uh, alia. I'm going to be guided here by a book that will soon be translated into Hebrew by Eva Wengren on the, on the alia uh, Gomukowska. So, indeed, Polish government, at the, just after the Second World War, we are not yet in the, uh, in the 56, uh, Polish government did not oppose the uh, the emigration of, of Jews, because it thought that the task of reconstructing the community life after the Shoah was going to be extremely difficult. 
Also, the Polish government felt that the surrounding anti-Semitism was too difficult to tame by the state. So, at, in that, at that period, uh, roughly 70 or 80,000 Polish Jews left Poland. Um, after 1949, Stalinist terror worsened in Poland and Jewish situation worsens too. Anti-Semitic campaign in the Soviet Union uh, starts to be felt in Poland and the functioning of various uh, Jewish organizations is increasingly difficult. National Jewish Fund and Fund of Reconstruction of Palestine in Lodz the two Zionist movements are dissolved by the Ministry of Public Administration. So then some reform come in, in Poland. And those reform made possible this first Gomulka Alia. And this is a quotation from Hendrik Greenberg. And I thought till quite recently, actually till the book by Eva Wengen, that this was really a friendly and nice Alia. So you, you know this passage, right? So uh, Greenberg, in this wonderful book, speaks about um, the fact that here in Israel, Gomuka, you know, there is a kibbutz Gomuka, there is a Gomukovo uh, neighborhood. Gomuka was really liked here precisely because there was this, he was more popular in Israel than in Poland, according to Greenberg. Um, he, left, he let Jewish people go for free. They were able to take their... Uh, freezers and, and uh, washing machines, etc., etc. So this kind of enthusiastic life uh, that is uh, being, yeah, that, that, that you can find it in Greenberg, you can find it in Marek Huasco too. Uh, but things were not that optimistic, actually. The end of the Stalinist era in Russia was marked, as I said, by the rise of anti-Semitism and propagandist trials against Jewish members of the Communist Party in Russia and in Czechoslovakia were very violent. In Poland, workers' strikes and the workers' party, uh, there are workers' strikes and the workers' party tries to adapt a new discourse. And Władysław Gomułka comes to power in uh, 56. So something good tr starts to happen. There is a desire of change in Poland which is accompanied by an increasingly demagogic and anti-Semitic discourse. Officially, the anti-Semitism was fought against. Less officially, the crimes of Stalinism were attributed exclusively to the Jews. Zenon Novak, in October 1956, uh, he stood against Judeo-Stalinization. Right. He was not followed by the party, but his ideas became widespread among the people. Analogous, uh, uh, th there was an analogous emigration of Jewish people from Romania and Hungary. So the borders in Poland in 1956 opened because the, there was a general liberaliz liberalization of the Eastern Bloc. Certainly, the governing party wanted this openness to be seen from abroad as a new way of doing politics and not as a consequence of anti-Jewish movement. Poland wanted, okay. Poland wanted to be seen as a... Uh, as a humanitarian country, which allows Polish Jews to join their Israeli families. And finally, the emigration movement was not very much talked about, because nobody in Poland wanted to suggest that there might be a mass emigration escape from anti-Semitism. And on the other hand, the Israeli press was very enthusiastic about this openness of the Polish government. So as you see, the, the, the situation is much more ambiguous than we could think from, from Greenberg's uh, writings. And indeed, Jews left Poland at that time because they lost their faith in applied communism in general. They felt betrayed as Jews. Communism brought a promise of official indifference towards ethnic identity and promise of universality, and those promises were not fulfilled. They, of course, suffered from daily anti-Semitism, 
and some of them wanted to be close to their Israeli families. And then comes the other uh, Gomuka exodus, not immigration this time, not Aliyah this time, but exodus. And um, I will not talk about it here, of course, because we are going to, to devote all our time to this question today. But it's, it's a very interesting situation. Polish romanticism, with Mitkiewicz in particular, was a very different romanticism from the anti-Semitic uh, German romanticism. And indeed, we see here a quotation from Mitkiewicz when he, uh, when, where, where he criticizes Krasinski, who, uh, who, who was slightly anti-Semitic. And Mitkiewicz says, so the most important national 19th century poet in Poland, uh, Mitkiewicz accuses Krasinski of making a national mischief, defaming the character of the Israeli, Israelites. I will not read the whole quotation, but it's interesting, and you, you will understand why I'm underlining Mitkiewicz here. It's interesting to see that Polish romanticism was very close, to, was, was uh, marked by, uh, by close, closeness to Israelites, as they said before. Yes, Mitkiewicz comes back in the 60s, as you know. This is precisely what, why I was quoting him. This is Jade by uh, Daymek, one of the most important pieces by Mitkiewicz. This uh, drama was for, forbidden by, by the Polish government as being uh, anti the party, anti Soviet. And this, dra this, dra this uh, prohibition was uh, at the beginning of the stri student strikes in, uh, in March 68. So this drama, I will, probably will speak about this later, this is a dr romantic drama, uh, very important for Polish culture, is marked by this quotation, my name is Million, because four millions do I love and suffer agonies. Uh, I suffer, I become crazy. So here the, the, the subject talks to God, okay? I suffer, I become crazy, and you? You are so wise and cheerful. You govern, you judge, and apparently you make no mistakes. Okay, so this is a classical quotation from 19th century. And this quotation was a leading moment of, the, of a movie by Tadeusz Konwicki, where Tadeusz Konwicki takes the very same drama, and in the moment when the, when the hero addresses God, with all the accusations, Konvitsky decided to show the concentration camps, right? The death camps. So this, this, po this romanticism, the, the place of Mitkiewicz is quite important in the Polish-Jewish relationships. The, 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 the March drama was very present in the, in the Polish cinema. Kishlovsky, I will not quote him here entirely, but Kishlovsky was, was, was ashamed by, by what happened in, in, in March in 68, and it was present in particular in his Przypadek. Uh, other movies uh, mention the, those events. Piwowarski, Marcowe Migdały, the most well known probably. Konwicki, again, Jak daleko stąd, jak blisko. Uh, Marek Piwowski in Race, he's not speaking about Jewish migration, but he's making fun uh, of the, he's making fun of the anti-intelligentsia movement in 68. Finally, Andrzej Żuławski in Diablo, that is happening in the 18th century, but still it's a metaphor of March 68. By the way, Andrzej Żuławski was also one of those who were obsessed by what happened in March 68. This book starts uh, with the evocation of those events. Probably it was the, the first book I've ever read of those events, so I really, um, it's a, a personal confession also. Um, yes, so I, I will soon end, don't worry. This is a tiny quotation from yeah, Justyna Koszarska, Schultz, and Natalia Romik, who are the young curators of the exhibition in Poland Museum uh, devoted to March 68. And in this quotation, you will see you see that this exhibition not only speaks about 
about March 68, but it also s deals with the, un the, with the universal fear connected to losing the senses of security, right? Uh, by the way, it's the, the catalog, uh, catalog of the exhibition is wonderful too. Uh, so about this, this sense of security, I would like to quote here one of these uh, talks that were given at the conference in Polin Museum a few days ago. Uh, talk given by Michał Bilewicz, who is a, a social psychologist. And this is something that is very striking and maybe gives you some better understanding of what was going on in Poland, what is going on in Poland those days. So this is um, a series of graphs or whatever uh, where you see uh, that in what, in, 90, in 2013, uh, Polish people indeed didn't want to have, 13% of Polish people did not want to have a Jewish collaborator. They didn't want to have a Jewish neighbor for 24% of them. And in 2013, 37% uh, of Poles didn't want to have a Jewish family member. And the stats come, go from 2013, 14, 16 and 17, they exploded, right? They have recently exploded. The question is what happened? At that point in 2000, uh, whatever, 14 and 15, there was no, I mean, no anti-Semitic discourse were pronounced in Poland. And the su suggestion made by Michał Bilewicz is that indeed the current government feeds other fears feeds fears related to the refugees. And once you open uh, a discriminatory, discriminatory discourse, everything becomes possible. And the Jews will suffer from this opening of, of, of Polish uh, xenophobic discourse, which is indeed an official policy of the Polish government those days. Okay, so I'm over, but I have something I, I brought you a tiny gift from Warsaw, when I, where I was uh, last week, this week actually, not last week. Konstanty uh, Gebert really wanted to be here with us, but he, but he couldn't. So he made a tiny movie, I made a tiny mo movie, it's the beginning of my career in movie making. Okay. <coughs> Historia się powtarza drugi raz jako farsa. And we are right now witnessing the farce. It's sad and disappointing, and um, I wish I could be here with you to discuss Mark 68 one time over again. But there is an important difference. In Mark 68, we were all alone. This time, we're not. Mark 68 was a pan-national Polish cause that ended being a Polish-Jewish issue. Fifty years later, there's a Polish-Jewish issue which is part of a larger pan-national Polish cause. And this time in the struggle, we're not alone. We're part of Polish civil society. And yes, um, in the long run, the struggle will end with us rebuilding the kind of Poland that we were able to build over the last 30 years. But it will be bad and sad and disgusting in the meantime. But we've seen worse. So um, I really regret not being there. Enjoy your conference. And cheers. So I can only repeat what he just said. Thank you so much. Enjoy the conference and talk to you soon.